gets you through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Welcome to the podcast. And Hazy, what have I always said? You've always said, wash your hands after you go to the toilet. <laughs> And for goodness sake, don't put your undies on the outside. Put your undies on first and then your pants. And apart from that, I've always said that having daughters is a beautiful little thing. And now it's proven that it can lengthen your life. Yeah, I don't really understand that. Yeah. Particularly for a father, that just doesn't seem right because it's a life worth of stress. Just a tiny little asterisk too. This excludes all teenage girls. Yeah, because you know what they say? Mm. And a wise man by the name of Bruce Abernathy once told me this. He said, when you've got a daughter, uh, when you've got a son rather, you've got one particular thing to worry about. When you've got a daughter, you've got a million of these little things in particular to worry about. What's the one one thing for boys you've got to worry about? Oh, I'm not going to say. Jody, you are the owner of... Several hundred beautiful daughters. I don't know if I own them. Mm. They're how not. Ma- they're not where'd you get them from? Marketplace. <laughs> they're not cattle. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, sometimes you have to herd them up like cattle. <laughs> yeah, that's very, very true. Mm. Yes, four beautiful daughters I've got. Yes, and in terms of your beautiful partner Greg, the lovely Gregory, uh, do you feel like he's almost defying the laws of age and getting younger, or at least at the bare minimum, extending his life? Oh, maybe they, I think they keep him young. Because, do you reckon? Yeah. In a way, because they're so active. I just don't know about this. What about this? A study that's conducted in a university in Poland, and isn't it the Polish who always know the way? Oh, yeah. Oh, Don't we always go to the Polish for guidance? I always think that. Like mm. in any given situation where I'm confused or perplexed, I go, what would the Polish do? <laughs> exactly right. Mm. What would the Polish do? Mm-hmm. That's what we live by. Uh, they collected data from over thousands and thousands of individuals. The research findings indicated a positive correlation between father's longevity and having daughters. Specifically, the study showed that the number of daughters a father had was associated with an extended lifespan with an average increase of 74 weeks per daughter <gasps> born. Really? So Greg's going to extend his life by about four years. It's 74 times four, whatever that may be. Uh, who knows? Yeah. If you do know, I mean, text us through 0400 <laughs> I don't think anyone will really be able to work that out. <laughs> no. um, that's extraordinary, isn't it? In contrast, the number of sons did not have a significant impact on paternal longevity. <laughs> I just don't I don't understand how possibly. And I'm not just talking to those who have got daughters. You know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you are a daughter or you're a sibling and you've got a sister, you know just how much stress <laughs> yes. your sister or your daughter has caused. I find it very difficult to believe that teenage girls could prolong anyone's life. Oh, my very goodness. <laughs> Our little daughter has just turned three years old and yep. she stole a car the other day. <laughs> yeah. Robbed a servo. Did she? Caught her laundering money at the casino. But listen, you showed me a photo of her yesterday and I was like, that is the face of an angel. Oh, I don't. She's got, no, she's got the beautiful little chubby cheeks and the ringlets. She looks gorgeous. Yeah, she turns that on for the camera. Does she? And then as soon as she, as soon as you, she sees you put her phone away, you just go, oh, it just turns this absolute little gremlin. Beautiful little gremlin, though, you're right, can turn in an instant. Um, one specific example that I, that you showed me, and I'm not sure if we can talk about this on radio, but... Let's just see where this goes. Made me never want to have any kids again, let alone daughter. Well, I mean, you talk about daughters prolonging our lives. Yesterday, I nearly cut her short yeah. because she. I, I thought, oh, I'm just going to have a little nap here. Her older sisters are around. They can keep an eye on her. It's fine. I'm just going to go to the bedroom and have a little sleep in the afternoon. And I hear this, Mom! <laughs> Harper just pooed her pants oh, and I've gone up. Great, great combination of words, isn't it? Yeah, and I just thought it w- the situation might have been contained, yeah. perhaps, as they can be. Yeah. Uh, however, no, it was... Free the poo. All <laughs> over. It was all in her pants. It was all down her legs. It was in her shoes and she had proceeded to tread it throughout the whole entire house. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and I was like... Well done, Arsenal. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just picked her up and I've chucked her in the shower and I said, no, she's fully toilet trained normally. Yeah. I said, darling, how did that happen? She goes, oh. she goes, I just thought it was a fart. <laughs> <laughs> a valuable life lesson learned there. <laughs> Never trust a fart. If you've been waiting to skip the school holiday crowds for your next trip, now's your chance. Yeah, take a sneaky weekender with whatif.com. I just imagine all those empty beaches. Book accommodation and more on the What If app. What If it's Aussie for travel.
Here's what you're waking up to, Adelaide. News. In the news today. Breaking news. Breaking news. What's in the news today? Your post snooze news. It can be tough at this time of the morning just to digest all the little bits and pieces that you need to know news-wise. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. we can get through the absolute creme de la creme, and that is news reader Abby. We have three bits of news. And news reader Abby kicks us off. Morning, Abs. Good morning. Uh, you know how I like to bring you the big stories of the day. Yeah. So obviously this one, um, we could see a bit of an issue with Christmas this year because there's a shortage of Santas. Oh. What, what, what do you mean? Plural? So you know how you go. Well, obviously <laughs> Santa is one person, but he needs lots of helpers, Help. yes. and he needs helpers in shopping centres and in yeah. shops down the road. When you you know you go and you sit on his lap and you have a photo, and in my case, you take your dogs because you don't have children, etc., etc. Sure, which is one of the sadder things. I know, there. I know. That. Anyway, um, moving on from me. So yeah, we need Santas of all shapes and sizes. Anyone can apply. You basically just need to be jolly and. Have Happy. you got to have a good ho, ho, ho. Yep. Um, so, yeah, you can uh, go and apply. There's a talent agency called Seen to, Be- uh, sorry, yeah, Seen to Believe. Right. Uh, so they're ramping up their search for Santas. Now, they might like to know that I actually dressed up as Mrs. Claus up in Cairns one year. Did you? For the good people of Cairns. Oh. And I nailed it, if I say so myself. <laughs> yeah, so right. maybe I could be a Mrs. Claus for them. Perhaps. Oh, okay, so you just approach that agency. You don't just write a, a strongly worded email to the I mean, North look, Pole? it's probably not a good idea to rock up to the shopping centre just as Santa. <laughs> you probably do see, do need some credentials. So. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, so there you go. Specifically as well, I mean, they don't want to discriminate in terms of body size and shapes. Oh. But surely, like if you're, for example, victim Wembenyama playing for San Antonio and you weigh about 70 kilos but you're 7 foot 4, mm. I think they're going to be like, sorry, mate. Yeah. You can't be Santa's helper. Yeah. But know, maybe Santa's sense. gotten his, you know... Maybe he's been running around the Torrens with you this year. Yeah. Maybe he's really put his health well, first. He's, well, he's, he's grown. Or, well, <laughs> he's grown, or he's grown. yes, either or. <laughs> anyway, so if you want to be Santa and spread the cheer this year, go and sign up and become the man in the big red suit. There you go, something to think about. Lucy. Uh, what about this story? Australians are being urged to prepare for seven months of severe weather after the Bureau released a grim long-term forecast. So... Um, You can have severe weather at any time of year, but there are two things that are occurring at the moment um, in conjunction with one another. So uh, bushfires due to... Heatwaves and bushfires are more likely due to El Nino and a positive Indian Ocean Dipoli climate condition. Right. So those two things are combining to mean that we have got from around October to April around seven months of pain. Seven months of pain in terms of... Uh, drastic heat. Yes. Right. Correct. Dry weather, hot weather, which, of course, in this country can be very, very dangerous indeed. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So there we go. We're like, oh, yeah, it's so nice today. It's 26. Uh, brace yourself for seven yeah. months. Thanks for the update, Jody Amelia Mulcahy. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I was a part-time weather girl at Channel 10 for many oh, years. I had absolutely no idea what I was talking about, much like the situation for the last two minutes. Maybe it's Amelia Jody Oddie Mulcahy. <laughs> <laughs> news. News, news, news. All right, let's wrap this thing up with just a little bit of sports news, shall we? Port sure. Adelaide's best and fairest sure. last night. Mm-hmm. Of course, the John Cale medal. Um, no surprises whatsoever. Zach Butters took that out. Yeah. Top three Zach Butters, Connor Rosie and Dan, Dan Houston. Okay. Well, um, took his mum too. He takes, his mum gets a, a gig to all the prime events, does Zach Miss, B. Mrs. Butters is on the A-list now. Yeah. Isn't she? She was at the Brownlow. Yeah. At the Best and Ferris last night. Yeah. So. Very good stuff. Um, yeah, a few question marks when she gets a gig at the footy trip. Brother <laughs> 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 boy's like, I'm just not sure about that, Zach. What, what do you mean you're taking your mum to Bali, Zach? <laughs> She's going to Cancun. What? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, Mrs. Butters just on the bar <laughs> doing laybacks. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's me, Ma. That's me, Ma. Uh, other footy news as well, of course. Tom Duda, it was official yesterday, came through, is uh, going to get a trade genuinely to Brisbane. So it's all in and dusted. So uh, the Crows get the first round pick. Trade request as well from Xavier Dersma. Yes. So they'll probably get a first round pick for that as well, which will go somewhere to getting guys like Asava Radicalia. So the trade period is going to get he- is going to heat up. But as we know, the trade period, it's sort of does nothing for days and days, days. and then the last 
seven or eight seconds goes bang. Yeah, yeah. It ramps up, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, it was put to me. It's a lot of men in a room thinking that they're smarter than one another, but they don't really get the job done because then they realise that they're not as smart as the person next to them. And so in the last couple of hours, bang, that's when it all happens. Gee, that's a bit harsh. It's, it's kind of like bidding on... It's a lot of cat and mouse. That's kind of, okay. Yeah. It, it's kind of like bidding on eBay. You wait until the very last second and then bang, and yeah. then you got it. And, and then you, you scoop snatch it. Or party. someone someone was smarter than you and snatched it from you. Mm. Yeah. There okay. you go. Oh, I'm sorry to suggest that there are there are some men in football in management who have egos. Sorry about that, Andrew. How dare you? How <laughs> dare you suggest such a thing? Newsy. Newsy. A two day double pass to Harvest Rock Festival worth. Over eight hundred dollars. Oh, how good! It's outrageous. It's outrageous, isn't it? You're so generous. Oh no! Do you know what? Sometimes I thought, just open up the wallet and see what happens. Yeah. Let's <laughs> get all our closest friends there. Yeah. The tightest of tight Nova listeners. Yes. And let's just have a big old party. What about the lineup too? <laughs> Jamiroquai, Beck, mm. uh, Noel Rogers, Tash Sultana, Ocean Alley, Paul Kelly, and more. Yeah, it's all there, including as well Lady Hawk. Great song. And this is what you're listening out for this morning. Sometime before 9 o'clock, this one's going to play when you hear 13, 24, 10. Double pass. Two-day uh, Harvest Rock Festival worth over 100 bucks. I was just trying to get my head around that, just trying to process it. Yeah. What we do <laughs> know is that... Uh, there was an interruption from your brain to the delivery of your mouth too, wasn't there? Sometimes there's a solid disconnection between my brain and mouth. Yep. Sometimes they meet up. Sometimes they're late. Yeah. But we always get through <laughs> Except that time that I swore <laughs> and couldn't uh, find the dumper. Oh, dear. Mm. Uh, Secret Sounds presents Harvest Rock 2. That was just last week. Get your tickets now from harvestrock.com. Yes. Uh, all right, so that song's going to play very, very soon. When you hear it, 13, 24, 10, I want to take you along. A bit of a day on me, if you don't mind. Yeah, very nice. You'll be in some fine form, no doubt. Do you reckon? Mm-hmm. I'll be responsible. I'll be leading by example. Mm-hmm. We'll see what happens. Well, history tells us that won't be the case. Yeah. All right, Joe's coming up next. We need to talk about a study that's come out of a university in Poland which is outrageously suggesting that daughters help fathers live longer? Yeah. Surely not. Um, Joe, before we launch into this story, I just want to give a quick shout-out to those people who wear, who wear Crocs. Yep. Because good on you. You value comfort over fashion. <laughs> oh, says the man who wears socks with his Birkenstocks. Well, I feel like Birkenstocks are trendy Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> Birken Crocs. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. How about this? Okay. Crocs unveil new cowboy boots to be released later this month. Oh, yes. I mean, that's pretty cool, isn't it? I got the horses in the back. Can you imagine? Just cruising down the street. Crocs surprised everyone with an unexpected addition last week. Crocs cowboy boots complete yep. with spurs. No. <laughs> No. Do they nice. also have those little ornaments that you put on the on the front of your Crocs as well? Oh, possibly. The number I saw was all black with all sorts of little accessories. Yeah, yeah I know what you're talking about. What are they called, those little things? I don't know. Yeah, no, M-nose. Gibbets. Gibbets. Yeah, they're like little attachments. Is it gibbets or giblets, like like the chicken giblets? Gibbets. Gibbets, for gibbets. sure. No, yeah, right. don't eat them. They're <laughs> not edible. <laughs> The company acknowledged that this unique creation was inspired by its devoted fan base. <laughs> oh, no. De- oh, God. Are you a devoted fan base of the Croc? Oh, my gosh. Croc stated, for years, the buzz around a Crocs-inspired cowboy boot has been building, creating a genuine fan fueled movement trending across social media. Wowie. <laughs> it's the combination no one ever asked for. Oh, so, in other words, they saw one comment on a Facebook post yeah. and went, oh, my goodness, yeah. guys, this is going to take off. Yes. So we're going with that. Yeah. We are absolutely going old, with that. So many of you have slid into my DMs <laughs> to ask me what Crocs I'm wearing. Yeah. That sort of vibe. Oh, 13, 24, 10, the worst combinations. And maybe it's not just fashion. Doesn't maybe it could be. be anything. For example, I mean, ugh, I'm just straight off the top of my head, ice cream with a bit of tomato sauce on top. Awful. Yuck. I don't think anyone's ever consumed that ever. No, 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 no. But some of the fashion mistakes getting around, for me, never again, never again will I wear denim undies. (laughs) (laughs) Enough's enough. (laughs) 
the chafing is out of control. <laughs> I told you not to wear a G-string. I told you to go full briefs, Hazy. You did say that. I should never ignore that. <laughs> so you Abby. wore a, a denim G-string? Yes. Wow. For a good two and a half years. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the other combination which should never happen mm. for me is humans and hankies. Like, come on. Yeah, true. Hanky uses. I know. <laughs> because it's essentially saving up all that's not, isn't it, and it putting is. it back on your person. Yeah, what are you saving up to show it off? Oh, no, that's like, disgusting. Come on. Uh, combinations, uh, movies where Delta Goodrum is a pilot. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't you go back to smashing Delta. I'm not. Delta I love is Delta. an icon. I love Delta. I just yeah. didn't enjoy that movie. I've had so many messages. <laughs> <laughs> Positive, though. <laughs> the minute, the minute <laughs> you and I mentioned Delta Goodrum being a pilot, we just get uncontrollable giggles. I I, I got asked by a guy I know if I was on drugs because he loved it so much. <laughs> he goes, really? are you on drugs? That was a great movie. I wow. still haven't seen it, but I can guarantee you right now that I'll love it. Oh, you will. I will absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, the other combination that should never meet is bike shorts and male genitalia. Or yeah, or? yeah, I agree with that. I, you always cop an eyeful at the gym and you just go, oh, God. Unless you're a professional athlete, you have no right to wear just bike shorts. Yeah, just bike shorts. You've got to have shorts over the top, Correct. don't you? That's See, okay. And this is the thing about football clubs, and this is what I discovered as well in yeah. South Australia. Mm. Um, in the eastern states, it's very acceptable to wear your skins mm. with nothing over the top. No. But it's, it's the South Australian thing that you wear shorts over yes. the top of skins. You have to. No, but if you're a professional athlete, I'm more than comfortable for the Port Adelaide and Crows boys to be wearing tights. Are you? Because they're black as well, so it's not like you're getting a super idea of... You know, whether they had a I specific uh, operation when they were youngster or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm trying to say here, Jones? Yeah. Oh, God. As you look around the room to all four women that you work with, what's the expression on each of our faces everyone's right now? Got, everyone's got their, uh, their head in their hands. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> History of mansplaining this morning, and that yeah, was probably good, a little bit too far. Mm. 13, 24, 10. <laughs> Give us an example. The worst combinations. Have you got one for us, Abs? Is that- Sorry, as I'm sipping my decaf coffee. Um, there it is. For me, <laughs> for me. <laughs> thank you very much. Yes, That's a great you one, Abs. You don't need to speak anymore. Decaf and coffee. Worst combination ever. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it's anything food related. Like okay. there was a donut king chip atrocity, like cinnamon donuts and chips. But the one thing that got me the other week was Doritos and coriander. No. Like my uncle, I sent that to him. My uncle Dave, and he the rant that I got back, he was he was losing his crap. Like people just, I just. Don't combine things that shouldn't be combined. Like if like there was Vegemite and chocolate or something, don't do no, that. No. If it's chocolate and chocolate, I'm all here for it. And send me a block and I'll tell you what it tastes like. But don't combine stupid things like herbs and chips. It's not okay. Mm. Sweet and savoury. Stop trying to make that a thing. Yeah. Like let them separate. Yeah. Let them run their own course. 13, 24, 10, the worst combinations doesn't necessarily have to be fashion, could be food, could be whatever. Mm. Uh, and we've got a $100 Lucky Dumpling Market voucher. Taste the flavours of Asia at Lucky Dumpling Market at Adel- Adelaide Springtime Food and Entertainment Hub, October 19 to November 5. We are talking all things Crocs because the good guys of Crocs mm. have unveiled a new cowboy boot. They've identified a real <laughs> niche market and gone, you know yeah. what we need to combine here? Cowboy boots and Crocs. Oh, strut away there, girlfriend. I got the horses in the back. Horse stock is a oh, there they go down the street. Yeah. Damn. The Look at that swagger. <laughs> 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 Goodness. I, I bet I bet the person who's wearing cowboy boot, boot crocs will going home alone? never have oh, intimate sorry. relations yeah. with another human yeah. ever again in their life. <laughs> uh, a lot of self-love, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, you know, different story. <laughs> um, we've brought uh, producer Zoe in as well because you come with some very nice little combinations that should never have seen a lot of time. Yes, and please get involved. 13, 24, 10, we've got a $100 Lucky Dumpling Market voucher. Yeah. Alcohol and dairy of any kind. Yes. Oh, together. You've seen mud shakes? Yep. Yep. They're essentially like, I think I think it's vodka based as well. So it's literally a vodka chocolate milkshake. Oh. Absolutely not. Oh, what's wrong with a couple of vodka milks? <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a little can of vodka milk for you right here. So oh, there you go. Delicious. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, nice. So haven't you had a Toblerone before? 
No. Oh, go to Bali and lay by the pool and have one of those babies. Yeah. yeah Change really? your life. Oh. Goodness sake. I'm surprised that the vodka doesn't make the milk curdle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just imagine that. That's that's when it starts to get your stomach churning, isn't it? When you're mm. picturing the vodka hitting the milk. Yeah. Oh, and obviously the milk's like, who are you? What yeah. are you doing here? And the vodka's like, what do you want? Let's fight. And fight, fight. <laughs> yeah. Let's fight. I will say that. I've got a lot of friends that have Crocs and a lot of friends that have cowboy boots. Okay. I'm I'm not sure they go together too well. Yeah, yeah. true. But they're both very trendy. Well, Crocs are trendy now, are they? Yeah. Oh, big time. Really? No, yeah. No. They're who, in. Said, who said No, who, I know. Who are you hanging around? No, I don't have them. I refuse because to me, Crocs are fishing shoes. But <laughs> <laughs> all my friends, uh, yeah, wear Crocs. And it's quite trendy to um, collect those things. Uh, producer Emma was saying gibbets. 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 Yeah. Yeah. You go to Zoe's house, there's just a collection of Crocs mm. covered in gibbets. Yeah. I would fear for my children if I put them in Crocs and sent them along to school that they would get They'd all actually all fit in perfectly fine, Jodes. It's really? horrifying. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. I'm 13 24 10. Let's go to uh, Maddie in Finden. Good morning to you, Maddie. Good morning. Yeah, outrageously awful combination. What do you got? Just memes. Oh, you know, yeah. like the jeans and sneakers factor. <laughs> yes. The sneakers. <laughs> Not even Jerry Seinfeld could make it cool. No. No, it's, it's never cool. Uh, Maddie, we've got a serial offender at my other workplace who wears sneakers to work. Who is it? I'm not. I'm not going to say. Give us a hint. You need to give them some basic fashion education. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. Good call, Thanks, Maddie. Maddie. Like that. It's a fine line between like cool sneakers, you know, like trendy sneakers and jeans, but actual Ooh. like you know, I'm talking what sort of brand? Oh, like Supergas and stuff with jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. That's a, yeah, a bit different. We that's can a dress sneaker. We can do a yeah. dress yeah. sneaker. <laughs> a dress sneaker. <laughs> that's that's new. <laughs> Oh, let's go to Evanston Gardens. Good morning, Jade. Good morning, guys. Poor combinations. Go for it. All righty. So I have a colleague at work, absolutely loves her, but she eats her banana and banana peels together. No. Oh, no. my God. <laughs> She's eating the banana peel? No, she doesn't. Yeah, correct. <laughs> what, Apparently is... got a lot of nutrients in it and she'll <sighs> eat it with her banana. Yeah, wow. So she just eats it, like, does she separate it or does she just eat it without peeling it? She just eats the whole banana. Oh, my gosh. Not the, not the little, like, the crusty knobby bit on the end. No. Yeah, that little, that really yeah. black bit, that's disgusting. Mm. No, and she's... then my brother likes egg and peanut butter. No. Yeah, oh, my God. Again. On in your world, Who are these Jade? people you're hanging out with, <laughs> I know. I know. I'm the only normal one with everyone. Oh, <laughs> wowee. That's extraordinary, isn't it? It's a really sort of rough food there. Mm. We've got this $100 lucky dumpling, Mark. I'm going to let you choose today. Who would you like to give it well, to? Well, I do want to give it to uh, Jay, but I'm afraid she's going to take one of her friends. She's going to be like, oh, I'm going to eat some chocolate dumplings yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, we've got a $100 dumpling market voucher for you here, so congratulations. Legend, thank you so much. <laughs> yes. If you want to go along too and watch me just eat, like inhale and snort dumplings whole, which is what I like to do, and then get dumpling burps afterwards, <laughs> yeah. visit luckydumplingmarket.com. Yeah, it's like watching a seagull eat chips and the, and the seagull hasn't eaten for months. <laughs> <laughs> it's really quite aggressive. <laughs> just like that. What a little text as well I got through, James. I was going to tear this off air, but a uh, mate of mine, just with a couple of smiley faces, he said, I've got a bad combo for you. Jody and Hazy. Oh. <laughs> Welcome. Set the scene for us, producer Zoe. Good morning. We're doing the same as always. We've orchestralised some Nova hits, some throwback hits, uh, and you guys are playing on behalf of listeners for a $100 faster pasta voucher today on Team Hazy, Daniel from Langhorn Creek. G'day, Daniel. Welcome. How you going, Hazy? Yeah, going pretty well, mate. <laughs> I, I must say I was miles ahead of myself last week, and I got so <laughs> arrogant, and I just started to believe my own hype. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I got brutally checked. So I'm back in focus now, Daniel. Let's go. Hit it. Beautiful. Let's go. Good luck, Daniel. Uh, Teresa on Team Jody today. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Jody. How are you? We lost last time. I'm really hoping you can play. Oh, yeah. This is the redemption oh, artist oh, from a few weeks right. ago. Okay, oh, no. okay, Teresa. Mm. You can do it. All right. Well, I've already let you down once, so. <laughs> So, what's another time? <laughs> <laughs> no, no more arrogance for me. No. No it's more. It's time to ship up. And also, stop talking over the top of the song when you buzz out and you get it wrong. Stop what, doing that. What do you mean? 
What well, do you mean? You try and distract me. What's going on no here? No fighting. Zone? All right. Song number no, one. <laughs> Let's do it. We're good to go. Right. Yeah. Oh, my heart's oh, pounding. Yeah. Are you feeling that too? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Is anyone else having it? It's too much percussion. Stop talking. Jody, let's get loud, Jennifer Lopez. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. <laughs> start, Jody. Oh, what an aggressive start. Okay. I get what you mean. His comeback to was on fire. <laughs> I finally got frustrated with him talking over her. I, I know, it's it. annoying. Yeah, isn't it? Andrew. Okay, sorry. Simmer. About that. Yeah, all right. Ready to go? Song number two. Here you go. Hey. Hey. It's Jody, as we belong together. No. Nah. Uh, 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 uh. Keep going, uh, Hazy. See um, if I can get it. Kelly Clarkson, mm. my life would suck without you. Well done. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I say we belong together now. Yeah, okay, that's just sure. a line from the song, you idiot. Now <laughs> it's getting interesting, ladies and gentlemen. It is. Tie Isn't break. It? <laughs> Look at this. This is what they call a genuine contest. <laughs> wow, we. <laughs> Where's this been for the last month? Oh, oh okay. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, Joe's <laughs> obviously went to songs to song, song, song training camp. <laughs> Came back bigger, better, and more brutal than Stop ever. Stop talking. I'm you. sorry. I'm just trying to control my heart rate. That's what's happening right now. Ready Everyone to go. Simmer. We're ready. For We're the ready. Tie break. Song ready? number three, please. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, Spike and dance. Oh. Easy go, that one. I believe that is uh, Dua Lipa, and that is Dance the Night. It is. (laughs) Daniel, I believe in the classics, they call that winning the chockies. Congratulations, (laughs) my friend. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. I don't think it was, was it? No, 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 okay. We not. just had a conversation about arrogance. I'm arrogant again. I'm, back. <laughs> I'm super arrogant again. Oh man! Oh, well, well done. One well of those done. things, though, isn't Sorry, it? Sorry, Teresa. Sorry about that. Oh. That's all right. I'll survive. <sighs> hey, can she I just said genuinely disappointed? I know. She'll have to come back. I'm sorry. Round three. Oh, no. Can mm-hmm. I just ask? Yeah, Teresa, if you get another shot of yeah. this thing, are you still going with Joe's or what? Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. So th- yeah. this is what happens. I give you the lines from the song, you get it, then you bide your time and you then you me, jump you in. You gave me the wrong line anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, now you're genuinely annoying me. Well done, Hazy. <laughs> All right, congratulations. No one's Daniel. happy for you. Look around I'm, the room. No one's happy yeah, for actually, you. Actually, I'm feeling that too. Everyone is genuinely disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here? What are this? This is a headline. One treat Aussies refuse to give up amid rise of cost of living. A huge 73% of Aussies who participate in this big old survey say they're still dining out either the same amount or more often compared to last year. Really? For Gen Z and millennials, that number is even higher. 79% of the two generations, 37% said they were interested in dining at a restaurant. It was trending on social media and Aussie foodies are willing to spend on luxury experiences of all those dining out. 34% said they typically go to fine dining oh, restaurants. There's a lot of facts and figures there that Isn't really it? went over my head. Now, repeat that back to me, please. Nope. <laughs> In short... What's the basic gist of it? People are not saving money on dining out. Okay. So if you're going to sacrifice one thing to try and save some money because everything's expensive... People, particularly Gen Zers, are saying, no, 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 no. I'll still be going out and getting cocktails. I'll still be going out and getting very, very expensive meals. I I get really guilty after spending money, like eating out. Like I took I took Summer out for lunch yesterday and it cost $60 and I felt so guilty. Sorry? What? Where? Where what? did you go? Melt? No. You take your toddler to melt? <laughs> No, it was... 60 bucks? Yeah, it was Vietnamese. It was just a little place, yeah. You and went and got a dog roll that cost 60 bucks? No, but also there was there were other children at home that wanted, you know, chicken rice as well. So yeah. by the time you add all that up, it was $60 and I felt ill afterwards. Wow. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Begs the question, what can you just not go without? Mm. So I feel like we all should collectively be trying to save money. Yeah. Because everything's so expensive. Well, you're a always... shocker for breakfast because yeah. I, I volunteer to make you breakfast here, which is eggs, beans, and and, and also toast. I don't know if it's that good, though, the ones oh. that you make. Oh. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just kidding. It's it's sensational. Whoa. And I appreciate and it. And that's the last time it'll happen, too, <laughs> just quietly. But you're oh, a shocker for right. it. You can't help yourself. You love, love going to get, like, a little bacon and egg roll. A little bacon and egg roll. Mm. It's one of life's little delicacies, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I'll go there. It'll turn into experience. Yep. If I could, if I had an endless bit of money, yep. I'd have a bacon and egg roll at least twice every day. Would you? Yeah, sit down and have a coffee, just zone out. Yeah. Okay. But even bacon and egg rolls now, the place I like to go to, it's 12 <laughs> bucks yes. for a bacon and egg roll. <laughs> what it should be $5 max. That same place, I had just poached eggs on toast with avocado and it cost me $20 yeah, the other day. Unbelievable stuff. It's insane, but yet we refuse to let it go. Yeah. Elsa even, style. Like even when you go to the uh, to the <laughs> to the dumpling market as well, you should be saving these dumplings. But you're eating it like a like a chook. You just sort of <laughs> tilt the head back and let it flow through, yeah. and you're like, "That's not worth the man." Oh uh, dear, thirteen twenty four ten. What do you refuse to give up? Yeah, let's go to Abby in the newsroom, please. What do you refuse to give up? I know, I know. I refuse to give up nails. Getting my nails done. Yeah, they're acrylics. I get a pedicure and my acrylics filled, and it costs me usually like a hundred and ten dollars. That's every wow. four weeks. Whoa. And I know that if I just got them shellacked, yeah, they'd it'd be fifty it's half bucks. That. Yeah, at least. Yeah, but mm. I just like having nice nails, and I like them being long. Yeah, yeah right. Okay, okay. Well, that's mm. fair enough. Um, you should see your producer Zara as well. She's mm. got sensationally beautiful nails as well. Mm. Got and to observe. do you know what my mum says to me? She bless her. She goes every time I spend money. She goes, Abby, that's your front door. Or, Abby, that's a, a, a lick of paint on the wall because I'm trying to save for a house. Mm. So she guilt trips me. Thanks for really breaking that down for yeah. you. It yeah. you feel horrendous about having beautiful yeah. nails. What so about I cry Abby, once a month. Yeah, Abby's door as well, worth 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's a cheap door. <laughs> Hey, I'll be living in a cardboard box soon if I'm not careful. <laughs> you know when houses go through like a hurricane, they just put up a bit of board? <laughs> it's going to be Abby's door. door. <laughs> uh, cute nails, huh? <laughs> Thirteen twenty four ten. amidst this uh, cost of living crisis, what mm. can you just not give up? You refuse yeah. to give up. Yeah, mm. I've got one. I'll tell you after. Okay. We've got a beach house voucher as well to give away for the best call. $200 worth. We're talking about uh, one treat Aussies refuse to give up amid a rising cost of living crisis as they're calling it, and mm. that is dining out. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And so we're just uh, flat out, we're doing it as much as we did, you know, before COVID. Um, so no one's giving that up despite the rising cost of living. The one thing I can't give up at the moment, and I'm obsessed with it, is the Jagged website, you know, with yeah. all the active wear. Yeah. And they do these things where they're like three things for $99 or two things for $66. And I literally, three minutes ago, clicked on final 70% sale. Yeah, I, I can't help it. Isn't it crazy? So they have these deals where it's like three things for $99, yeah. two things for 66 or yeah. one thing for 33 yeah. and, <laughs> and Jody goes for the 99 because it's a deal somehow. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't even need an excuse to get Jody in with this stuff. Me no do good maths. <laughs> oh, let's go to full on. Good morning to you, Emma. Hello. Hello. So we're all trying to save money, Emma. What can you just not give up? Well, my fake eyelashes. I've been getting eyelash extensions for 12 years. 12 years? Really? Are they fake? I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like $140 every two to three weeks. Really? <gasps> oh, my I know. gosh. I know. But, Emma, um, correct me if I'm wrong here. You can't stop now because uh, when I've had them before, they pull out your actual real eyelashes. So do you have many left? Well, I do always ask. They seem to think it looks all right, but they're just a part of me now. I just can't give them up. I'd look. I don't know, bald, my kneecaps would be on my eyelids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> i got little little alopecia eyelids. Mm. Yeah, wouldn't look cute, yeah. so we're just sticking with them. Yeah. It's worth all the pennies, I reckon. Also, my other question is, Emma, I've seen women with so many fake eyelashes on that their lids kind of droop. They're, like, so heavy they can barely keep their lids up. Are you doing the real heavy stuff? Oh, well, I hope mine don't look that bad. <laughs> nah. I know what you mean, but no, nah, I don't think I've got that. Well, I don't have enough eyelashes to actually make it look that full, you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Okay. All right, Emma. Yeah, that's a good one. 140 bucks every two, three weeks. Wow. Well, Jeez, uh, if that's how much it costs, what about the girls on Geordie Shore? <laughs> <laughs>
earn 40 bucks a day. <laughs> Let's go to Athelston. Angie, good morning. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. What do you refuse to give up? Uh, streaming services. Oh, yes. we have them. We have them all, all of them. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things, Andrew. I, I reckon we've all got on board these different streaming services because there's a particular yeah. series that you want and it's like, oh, oh it's absolutely. this one. It's this one. Yeah. And then once you've got it, you're like, well, something else good might pop up. Okay, so... Well, when you have a teenage daughter, I mean, you have to watch everything, apparently. So, <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> so we need them all. So we think, oh, we'll get rid of this one. And like you said, oh, no, no, I can't get rid of this one. There's uh, something I need to watch. So... Yeah. Yeah, we have them all. Quickly run us through all the ones you've got. Uh, Disney, Paramount, Prime, Stan, Binge, KO, uh, Netflix. Um, <laughs> have I missed any? No. I don't think so. That's think that, right. Oh, Apple, Apple. Apple. Apple Plus. Apple Plus. Yeah. Got, got them all. Oh, yeah, it's all of them. I wonder how much that costs a month. To have yeah, every single streaming service. It's certainly going to uh, add up. Mm. That's okay. You know what? It's called education. So true. <laughs> Michelle from Meadows, good morning. What do you refuse to give up? Uh, so there's a little cafe in your work that does iced tea, and it's really yummy. Uh, but it's like $8.90 <gasps> for these little cups. Whoa. But I know it's like, <laughs> you could buy the box to make the tea, but not like, like a pot of tea. Yeah. Like multiple times. I like ten. But it's experience. Really nice. Michelle's had one this morning, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope my husband doesn't hear this because he will absolutely ban me from it. But yeah. it's nice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. $8.90 for a little iced tea. Yeah. yeah. Fair whack of sugar in there too, Michelle. Oh, don't tell me that. I think it's healthier. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. All right. No, it's not. It's really good for you. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I ordered a two hundred dollar beach house voucher to give away, Joe. That's what you like this morning. Um, I mean, I think Michelle probably needs a couple of hundred bucks just to deal with her iced tea addiction, yeah. don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, or, your, Michelle. or yours, Michelle? Oh, thank you. I'll burn off the energy on the water slide. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. That'll work. Um, I think we uh, Michelle's also confused one little aspect as well on the menu. It's actually a Long Island iced tea. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Doc, are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this daisy. Tuesday, 10th of October. I think you know exactly what to do. Put your pens and pencils and rubbers and erasers down <laughs> and let's do some learning, okay. ladies and gentlemen. Um, today's World Mental Health Day. Is it? Very, very important day on the calendar. Well, there you go. I, and I think it's really important on days like this just to check in on people that you might be a little bit worried about and just ask them, are you okay? And if they uh, if they say, yeah, I am, just maybe go, well, you don't see them yourself. Yes, and I will speak on behalf of the male species. Mm. We are not good at communicating in such a space. No, yes. no, it's not a strength. <laughs> We're very good at saying, yeah, everything's fine when it's not. Yep. So I think we're getting better, though. I think we're evolving in this space. I think it's been highlighted, and I think it's been given a lot of attention. So I think hopefully men find it easier to speak up now. Mm. Well said. Uh, 1979, rock band Fleetwood Mac get a star in Hollywood. What about more recently when uh, this song sort of started to circulate again on social media? And then you got all the kids being like, man, love this song. Yeah. This band's got potential. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, yeah, watch this space. Yeah. Hopefully they get a crack at it. Well, let's see how they go, oh, kids. Fleetwood Mac, though, just yeah. as good as it gets. Epic, aren't they? Mm. 1996, this is a story that you want to wake up to. A golden retriever was made an honorary life member of a Yorkshire cricket club after he sniffed out his 50th lost cricket ball. Well done, son. Yeah. That is what it's all about. Imagine waking up in the morning and just going, what am I going to do today? Yeah. Just sniff out cricket balls. Know exactly what you Go get a cricket ball, you good boy. <laughs> good boy, come go here. Go on, go do it. Another cricket ball. 2019, Simone Biles became the most decorated gymnast in history when she won a record 25th medal at the World Champs in Stuttgart, Germany. Um, the term goat gets thrown around willy-nilly, I reckon. Mm. And, I mean, if you think about it, there can't be plural goats, but she's the goat. <laughs> she is the goat. She is the gymnastics goat. Imagine just being able to fly through the air like she can. Yeah, imagine being like, hey, can you just jump up there 
And for most of us, we're like, oh, I can't do that. It hurts my knees. But if you're Simone Biles, you're like, yeah, I can, I can do that and throw in four or five flips. I know. <laughs> I, when they say do box jumps at the gym, oh, I, I can't. Oh I genuinely God. can't. Simone's doing flip jumps. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, number one song on October 10, 2014, all about that bass by mm. Megan Trainer. Yeah, and you know what they say, no treble. Yeah, no trouble at all. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. SAS Australia was back last night, uh, opened up with a bang. They buried the celebrities alive. I'm not kidding. They're in the desert, they put them in a coffin, and then they start throwing dirt on top. No, it's good. <laughs> Great start. <laughs> Really went straight to the top shelf, didn't they? My goodness. I mean, that's What's most next? people's worst fear, is it not? Being buried alive. Yeah, cop uh, that. I'm a celebrity. What are you going to yeah. do now? Oh, we're going to feed the contestants to a hippo. Yeah, see sure. what happens. And see what happens. Yeah. Um, so some pretty top notch. So, well, it depends if you how do you define top notch, but some pretty top shelf celebrities this time around. The highest paid on the show, she's getting paid a, a um, six figure salary, is Cocaine Cassie. What? Adelaide Dunn Cocaine Cassie. She's getting the top figure. Yeah. Oh, no one saw that coming. Yeah. Um, and she started out last night very, very triggered because she said that being on this show was like being in the Colombian prison, which, of course, she was in for three years and had mm. a horrendous time of it because she got caught smuggling five kilos of cocaine. Mm. Um, this is what she had to say last night. It was just a nasty environment. I was the rich white girl and being targeted... I didn't know how I was going to survive. I was almost sure that someone would kill me there. I feel like I've entered back into one of the yards there. Um, even the way that we eat food, the way we sleep, the guards there are very much the same. Well, well, well. Very interesting indeed. I'm so intrigued by jails and just living conditions and all those types of things. But it's a very strange situation. You're a man who watches World's Worst Prisons. I love it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely love it. Really? Yeah, going to different parts of the world, and some of the some of the jails make you go, yeah. Let's never commit a crime in general, but specifically in that country. Yeah, absolutely. And Colombia is probably one of them. But I, it, who saw that coming? That um, <laughs> SAS Australia would be like her regressing back to her prison days. Of course, it's exactly like that. Yeah. Well, Chappelle got a gig as well. Chappelle Chappelle got paid. I think I was reading this morning two hundred fifty thousand wow. dollars for going on SAS Australia. Oh my gosh, pass me the bookie board bags. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig McLaughlin on the show as well. And, you know, they ta do that thing where they put a hood on you and they take you into the room and they reveal your deepest sins. And, of course, his were being accused of sexual assault on um, the Rocky Horror Show. And this is what he had to say about that. I was found not guilty of any wrongful behaviour. It's because I was innocent. Calm down. Take a breath. Calming voice of Ant Middleton. There. So clearly, <laughs> clearly Craig Normally he's good. yelling in people's yeah. faces, yeah, telling them like, what a disgrace they he's are. He's like, whoa, is that what it feels like? Calm down. Yeah. Next thing, Ant Middleton's going to be doing one of those meditations on the car map. Calm down. Yeah, and you're like, I'll do anything for you, Ant. Yeah. You tell me exactly where to drive. Um, now, the final piece of the puzzle was Jason Akamanis last night, former three-time premiership player for the Brisbane Lions, and they made them do this thing where they had to chase after a train, jump on the train, find a container, and then jump off the train. He hurt his ankle on the train, and so went to visit the medic to convince the medic that he needed to be dismissed because his ankle was all busted up. This is so-called ankle injury. This is how that rolled out. I'm telling you. There's nothing we can do if it's going to be that painful. So we either I get a discharge or I have to just hear mum and just say I can't, I can't physically, I can't do it. But I'm not seeing anything here that would lead me to think I need to medically take you off the course. To be honest, it's with not you. bad enough. Is always um. Well, I can't see anything here. There's nothing. Yeah. There, I, do I you don't. see anything? It doesn't. To, to, no, they look. I they mean, look you're good. telling me oh, it well, hurts, there's, there's, but there's swelling in here. But where? where, where? <laughs> I reckon these two think these two toes are. Swallowing a bit. Okay. Oh, nice, Acker. Well oh done. God.
<laughs> oh my gosh! Imagine coming forward with an injury, and yeah. they're like, "There's nothing there, There's mate. Nothing there to see." That's <laughs> literally me every day. When I walk into the gym, <laughs> guys. I've hurt myself. No, you haven't, Abby. Get in there. Yeah, look, oh, there's a bit of swelling there. No, there's not. <laughs> And originally you said it was a left foot, now it's a right foot. I mean, yeah. make a decision, which uh, is it? And then next minute you just see Abby walking out of the good life, handing in her number off. 